In the, in the tradition of Ohio's legacy of inventors, McMaster, who died at age 87 in 2003, held 100 patents in his name. In another display of generosity, the Ohio University alumnus Stephen Schoonover and his wife Barbara donated $7.5 million to Ohio University earlier this month to help complete the new building for the Scripps College of Communication. This was the largest gift the school has ever received and will allow Ohio University to strengthen its nationally recognized center of excellence in communications, enabling the university to compete for students and faculty with the best known schools in this field across the country. And when we talk about national rankings, uh, I'm sure a lot more Ohioans are familiar with the rankings of Ohio State's football team um, than the fact that the Ohio State University ranks second in the entire country and first among all public institutions in the amount of industry-sponsored research dollars it attracts. In total research and development expenditures, Ohio State ranks 11th overall among academic institutions and 7th among public universities. This means that Ohio State is attracting over $700 million each year from external sources to be spent on top scientists whose discoveries can turn into economic growth for our state. And a three-school consortium led by the University of Cincinnati was awarded the largest single grant, $28 million, under the Ohio Research Scholars Program that we announced earlier this month, which also included awards to University of Akron for two endowed positions, Kent State University for two endowed positions, and funds for Cleveland State uh, and Youngstown State to link their programs to world-class research. The money that uh, was awarded to the University of Cincinnati's consortium will be used to fund an aerospace research cluster to study power and propulsion with three new research scholars at the University of Cincinnati, one at Ohio State, and one at the University of Dayton. And Cincinnati has a long-standing focus on aerospace research. Well, these are only some examples of what is happening across the university system of Ohio. I could fill my whole time at this podium with examples. Our challenge is to build on these, and I am confident we will do so. I predict that the university system of Ohio, together with Ohio's outstanding private colleges and universities, will soon be one of our state's greatest selling points, keeping our talent at home and attracting students, scholars, and businesses from around the world. A few months ago, I was able to see this theory work firsthand. Governor Strickland asked me to participate in negotiations with NetJets, the leading private aviation service in the world, which has a major operation in Columbus and was considering relocating out of state. Now, the fact that I was involved at all in this development effort speaks volumes about the changing role of higher education in the state's economy. Normally, a development matter like this would be the sole responsibility of the Department of Development, led by our good friend, the Lieutenant Governor Lee Fisher. But when the governor asked the company officials, the NetJets officials, what the most important issue to them was in deciding where to locate, what they said was they wanted to have a stronger relationship with higher education. And so at the request of the governor and lieutenant governor, we met with NetJets management to see what they needed. What we received was a laundry list of occupations and research subjects, including the need to hire pilots, mechanics, engineers, caterers, marketing, accounting, finance, computer programming, the need to be involved in research and fuel efficiency and logistics, and on and on. Clearly, no single school could meet all of this company's workforce and research needs. But representing the university system of Ohio and linking to our private institutions, we demonstrated to them that the research and the workers trained in the skills they needed would be available to them here in Ohio. Well, I'm happy to report that Ohio's effort was successful. Not only did NetJets stay in central Ohio, retaining 2,200 jobs, but they committed to an expansion plan that will add at least 800 more. The moral of the story is obvious. For NetJets, a modern, forward-thinking, 21st century company, a relationship with higher education is as important or perhaps more important than any other business factor. And NetJets is not the only company that sees this, I assure you. I consider the NetJets' success an early dividend from the university system of Ohio. But if Ohio is to prosper economically, we cannot do this 
one company at a time. That's why the core of our strategic plan is a commitment to raise the educational attainment of Ohio's working population and to close the gap between Ohio and our competing states and nations. And we have quite a gap to close. Ohio currently ranks 38th out of the 50 states in the percentage of working adults who have a two-year college degree or higher. 38th. And Ohio used to pride itself on its well-educated workforce. The problem this presents to us is obvious. Businesses today must compete in the global economy, which means they need workers with the education and training to compete on a global level. If we don't have that type of workforce, Ohio's economy will not grow. It's just that simple. President Kennedy once said, our progress as a nation cannot be swifter than our progress in education. The human mind is our fundamental resource. The President's words could not ring more true for Ohio today. So how do we address this problem? Well, we must, of course, graduate more students, a challenging task that requires us to comprehensively address affordability, accessibility, and quality, all of which the strategic plan seeks to do. But graduating more students is not enough to raise the educational attainment and move this state forward. Think about it. If we graduate more students and they leave for opportunities elsewhere, we have not accomplished anything. And if our universities sit alone as isolated islands of talent in a slow growth state, we have definitely not done our job. Therefore, for this plan to be a success, we must do three things. First, we have to get more Ohioans into college and graduate them. But we also have to, secondly, keep them here afterwards to live and to work. And third, we have to attract talent from outside our borders to come to Ohio so that we become a net importer of degree holders rather than a net exporter as we are today. The plan contains specific targets in each area. Progress towards these goals will be tracked on a dashboard available on our website. We will also track 20 different metrics that we call accountability measures. If you examine these 20 accountability measures closely, they tell the story of how we plan to meet the goals of graduating more, keeping them here, and attracting talent to the state. Now, while these goals seem straightforward, it is important to understand what a dramatic change in outlook they require for higher education. Now, the first goal, graduating more of our people, seems obvious enough. Not easy, mind you, because graduating more people will force us to re-examine re many of the ways we do business. Graduating more people requires us to adopt innovative strategies like our new Choose Ohio First scholarship program, which encourages students to, start to major in science, technology, engineering, and math, or our Seniors to Sophomores program, which, as you know, encourages high school students to begin their college studies while they are still in high school, or our 30-mile promise, which is our commitment that every Ohioan will be able to access a quality associate's and bachelor's degree in a field that leads to a good job at one of the lowest combined costs in the nation within 30 miles of his or her home. We can do this thanks to our outstanding network of community colleges and regional university campuses, a legacy in part of Ohio's far-sighted first chancellor, John Millett, on whose recommendation Governor Rhodes and the legislature at that time established the community college system and worked to make sure education past high school was available in every corner of our state. With this built-in infrastructure as our not-so-secret weapon, we can now expand the programs and degree offerings to include those that Ohioans need to succeed in today's economy. Now, no matter how many new innovative strategies we pursue to increase enrollment and degrees completed, it does not change the fact that graduating people is what we are expected to do in higher education, and so we don't expect to receive uh, your credit just for including that in our plan. 